Okay, and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and thank you very much for watching. You may wonder while I'm standing in a hallway outside of my demo room door. No, I'm not locked out, but there is a reason. The reason is Hike Vision have launched a new access control facial recognition terminal. This is the older model with the rain shield, um, really popular. We sold quite a few of them, but what I'm gonna do is take this new one out of the packaging. <sighs> And what you will see is a new sleek design. So new design, if I put it next to it, you can see there's quite a size difference. The screen is roughly the same size, but if I put it over it like that, you can see there is quite a difference. This is the one without the fingerprint module. Even with the fingerprint module, it's still only to about there. So it is a much smaller and uh, sleeker looking unit. Um, the cost is also different on this, so there is different versions. We've got the one without fingerprint, but it's got the 10,000 faces and the Wi-Fi capability. So we're gonna put it online shortly. Um, new design on the back, you can see, there's the model number for those of you that want to see it. And there's the cover, um, security screws, all of the connections are made off there. There's a mounting plate, SD card cover on the side, uh, USB slot, sorry and pretty much it really. And the mounting plate guides in there and then locks in. So we're gonna take it inside now, set it up on the software to show some of the great features of this new unit. We expect this to sell really well. So we'll see you in a bit when we're back inside. Okay, welcome back. So we've got the unit now, we're gonna plug it in here. You can see I've got the fly leads in the back ready. There's my power connector. It's a 12 volt, three amp PSU needed. Um, the fly leads are come with it, click in the back here. It's got a slot for a SIM card there, and the LAN connection goes there. Um, so we're gonna plug the LAN connection in. Okay, that's secured. And we're gonna put the 12 volt, three amp power supply in. So the unit is now powered up. So there's the uh, white light to enhance the facial um, capture for the accuracy and the speed. Once we've done that, we can put the cover back on here locate that on there, security screws, back tamper there, unit then goes onto the mounting plate and secured with security screws on the side there. Um, you can see that's a lovely unit, you must admit. So I'm now gonna put this here. So now we're gonna transfer you to the 4200 software where we'll add the unit, activate it, and then uh, go through the complete setup. So see you in a minute on my PC. Cheers, guys. Okay, hello and welcome back. So we finally have the face rec unit fitted over here. We've got the latest 3.1.1.9 IVMS 4200. Uh, there could be a new one by the time you watch this, but this is currently the latest version. What I've done is to simplify it and to make it less messy and cluttered. I've deleted everything, and all I have in here is the master call station, so the modular intercom. Um, there is a reason, because we can call the indoor stations from this, uh, the new face rec terminal. So I've added the master uh, call station on the modular intercom. I've done a separate video on that, if you want to watch that. The two indoor stations I've got, and the new face rec module here. For those of you that want to see more about the face rec module, under here is the specification sheet. So if I scroll down, there's different models. It tells you the face recognition distance between 0 0.3 and 1.5 meters, suggested height 1.4 meters to 1.9, deep learning algorithm, 10,000 face capacity, 5,000 uh, fingerprints and 50,000 event capacity, multiple authentication modes and blah, 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 blah. Uh, 0 0.5 seconds uh, face recognition accuracy, 99%. Standalone operation, uh, you add it as a network device to the IMS 4200 or Hike Central, and there we will pick this up from there. So that's the specification sheet there. Um, what I've also done is added it to an NVR, I'll show you that briefly in a minute. So once we've added it, we will go to config. Um, so I'm just gonna run through what I would set. There's a lot of stuff that you can set if you want. So under general, uh, you can give that whatever name you want, time, when I added the device, I already time synced it to the software, so that's already accurate. System maintenance, I can default, etc. backup, upgrade firmware. This is the latest firmware. Again, if you're watching this in a couple of months' time, there may be a new firmware. It's always worth checking. 
RS-485, we're not using that. We're only having the main admin user and we don't have to worry about security. Uh, we do have to worry about security, but not in that menu. So under general, I've set my IP parameters as needed. Uh, report strategy, I'm not going to use that. Or the network center configuration. Under advanced settings, it's just a DNS setting. Wi-Fi, if I want to use it, I can enable Wi-Fi. Select uh, a network, so it'll scan the network to find any Wi-Fi that's in the building. If I click refresh, don't know if I've got any enabled in here. That is compatible. So we'll cancel that. But I can have a, I can obviously type that in and uh, type the password, etc. So if I wanted to use Wi-Fi, would I use Wi-Fi? Probably not. Um, I'm sure, so, bleh, so I will disable that but you can use Wi-Fi if you like I don't have any Wi-Fi in this especially in this room we're upgrading that Wi-Fi network due to the amount of people and devices on there linked network configuration so the master station IP address is the IVMS 4200 or the desk phone the concierge phone so I'm going to put my IP address of my computer in here uh, 3.49 the main station the main door station IP address 192.168.3.191 is the IP address, I believe, let me just check, 191, yeah. So this is the IP address of the modular call station master. Click save. You don't have to use this. You can just use it as a face rack access control terminal. But I'm going to show you the intercom function there because I do believe as part of a converged technology system, this becomes a very, very powerful system. So face rack access control, but also with the ability of uh, intercom. So we're using it with a modular uh, today. So you've got your alarm. You can adjust the relay uh, settings. Click on that and adjust it as needed. So the uh, you know the output time. You've got the face rec parameters. It's, uh, you don't need to adjust any of that. In fact, when you try to adjust it, there is nothing to adjust. Configure, configure the face picture parameters. I wouldn't adjust any of that to start with. The default is normally um, fine for general use. If you need any help with that, please ask us. But you can adjust that to increase the accuracy and speed if you need. Supplement light parameters. So you've got light one and two, so it's the white light and the IR. So we'll turn those on. And just put it up to about there. Save. And it's already on there. So we'll just reduce that down a little bit. To about half. And click save. So both IR and white light are on. Now I don't know if you can see in the background. You can see the white light um, LED bar along the top. Which will help illuminate, illuminate. Illuminati. Illuminati. Illuminate. Whatever. The face. To give a quicker, better, accurate read. Device room number configuration. So I'm just going to put three in there. Um, I've got it as part of an intercom system now, and this is my next free device number. Um, I'll show you that working in a little bit. Image, video and audio. We're going to make this 1080p image. Uh, video and audio, uh, variable bit rate, and save that. Wait for that to save. Uh, go to substream. Variable media, yes, that's fine. I think I've crashed my software now. Okay, those of you that saw that crash, I know why. <laughs> Actually, it didn't crash the software at all. The device rebooted. When you add in the under network and you do the link network configuration, it actually reboots the terminal to take the new settings. So that is why it rebooted and it looked like this uh, software is crashing. So all is okay. The software did not crash, which is a bonus. So we've adjusted that to 1080p for the camera. Um, and put that to variable. Video and audio so we can record that onto an NVR. Volume we're going to leave as that. Operation. Scroll down. You've got the relay there so I can actually test the relay. If you're using the relay on the back of that a unit to open a door, turnstile, whatever that may be, barrier, then obviously you can test it, and then the status is there. And click refresh and it would update you. So, what we're going to do now is quickly show you on the NVR, I've added it here, so if I double click on that to view it. So that's the camera that's built into the FaceRec terminal. 
I'm gonna enable the audio. I'm gonna enable the audio. Okay, so uh, web web browsers are quite slow, especially Internet Explorer. But there you go. So we're going to close that down and close that down. So if you want to add it to an NVR, that's your standard uh, procedure. Add it to an NVR and you can have the video and audio function if you want to have continual video backup. Okay, moving on. So what we're going to do now is set up the access control side of it. So under person... I'm going to add, so the organization, let's change the name to DVS. That's where I work. Click add person, and person ID is one, so it's Dave, CTO, male, last time I checked. Although, happy for anyone to come and recheck that. 999, so effective period, remark, CTO. Um, add face, I'm going to remote collection of the face, select device, face rec terminal. And I'm going to click on read and then go and capture my face. Ugh. So get ready and go. There we go. So that's captured my face using the face rec terminal. Click on OK. So we've added that. Let's add a card. Um, we're going to use one of these height vision access bobs. Where is it? In my pocket somewhere. So we're going to use um, this, uh, basically, MyFair 1K Prox. We'll add it as a normal card, remote collection, device, face rack terminal, click on OK, click read. Go and use the built-in reader. There we go. So that's found that card and click add. Um, so that's that done. I can edit it. I can also create a QR code there. I can take a picture of that on my phone. Um, so if I take a picture of that on my phone now, there we go. So I can use that, uh, send that, to, click download, download that to my desktop. Day, QR, click save. And what that can, you can actually email that. So if you set up a visitor, you can set up a start and uh, an end time and actually send that to them as a QR code. So on their phone, they can present it to there to get through the access control door. So uh, paperless, no tokens, no money, no wasted um, MyFair cards. If you want to set a fingerprint up, do that. I'm not going to because we don't have that capability in the unit. So under the access control, uh, for a pin code, I'm going to set one, two, three, four, five, six up. Uh, you can enable any of these extra. I've done a separate video on that if you want to read more into that. Resident information, let's bind it to a device. So let's go to indoor station large, room two, floor one, I'll go floor one, room two, just to bind it. And then any additional information you want to put in there. That's pretty much it. Um, just trying to think if there's any more that we need to do. No, that's about it. So if I mark that as a visitor, you can actually mark how many times they're allowed to come in as well. So if it is only a one-time use, just put one in there. And uh, let's click Add. In fact, let me edit that and take that visitor off. Silly Dave left it on. Okay, fine. So we've added the person in, that's all done. Uh, next go to access control. Okay, so we don't need a, a, a template, so let's add a group. Let's call it the group is of DVS all doors. So all day authorized. We're gonna select DVS organization, there's only me in there. And we're gonna select which um, access point they're allowed through. So it's the face rec terminal, and um, that's the one we're using. So click save. Highlight it and click Apply Changes to Device. So all applied. And then I select again and click Apply All to Device. There we go. Job done. 
So we come off there, that's now been applied to that access control terminal. So into advanced functions, device parameter, face rec terminal, you can adjust these as you need. Select that, select that. So door one, let's call it the uh, demo room. Uh, you can select the door, contact, exit button, lock time, etc. But we'll just click on save. Entrance card reader, demo room in, for instance. Whatever else you want to fit in there. And then you can change that. We're not using um, that second weakened card reader and alarm output. So pretty much adjust that as you need. Remain open close if you want it to remain on free access. We're going to go down to authentication. So on that door, we're going to use face and card to make it a little bit more secure. So select that, copy to weak, click save. That's save. You can have it different. So you can have it card, card and face different times for different you know access parameters, depending really on how secure you want it to be and on what times. Elevated configuration, first person in, anti-pass by, multi-door interlocking, pin code, and more parameters. So there's lots and lots to configure on there. We keep adding to all this. So please do let us know any feedback. So that's pretty much there. Linkage configuration. If you go into face uh, rec terminal, if you want to start doing cross linkages, click add. Select the card linkage or event linkage, so you can select like device exception, alarm input, card reader event, and then you can select any of these and actually start. So person mismatch or exception demo room in, and then you could put uh, buzzer on control enable demo room in linkage not linkage, and then you could put bloody. Click save and whatever you want then capture, record, alarm output, alarm input, access point, audio play. Lots of things you can do. Click save and that saves it in there. So you can really start building up these events that are going to present themselves and um, that are important to you within the software. Under video intercom, under contacts, we've added one contact, which is me. Um, if I call that, that's calling the linked, I'm going to hang up on that. It's calling the linked indoor station. So from the software, I can actually call my contacts directly and check if they're okay or if they need anything. Um, or from the intercom, I can actually call an indoor station. So what we're going to do now is go to monitoring, put the monitoring page up. If I click on that door, I can open door, close door, remain open, remain closed or capture. Um, none, no events present yet because I haven't done anything. So what you'll see if I turn that around, uh, I'll quickly show you. So swipe card. You'll see it's coming through with the events, and that is me opening the door. Click on details, and it gives you a little bit more details. So that's basically the event there. I'm going to set the camera up so you can see this working and show the intercom side because it's much easier to show from there. So give me two ticks, and we'll be back on the camera. Cheers, guys. Okay, and welcome back. So you can see I've got my face rec terminal there and an indoor station here. I press that, it comes alive. It's just uh, gone to sleep. So what we uh, are going to show you is me walking up to the face rec terminal and swiping the card. So you can see the white light there. I've got a, a token here. So this is the procedure. I'm going to approach it. Watch. So approach, swipe card, look in, authenticate. That's how quick it is. Um, obviously, ideally, it'd be mounted about that high. So again, out of shot now. Come in, swipe card. Authenticated. And it tells you that I'm authenticated. That's opened the door. So pretty straightforward, really quick. I'm going to show you quickly how to actually ring the 4200 software. So if you press the call button here, it says here, Call center, tap center to call the center. See the little guard man, bottom right hand corner? Click that. Calling the center now. That's actually calling the IVMS 4200, so I can answer that call. Please call. Hello. Hello. Um, please come through the door and come to reception. Okay. 
Okay, so that's how you call the centers. If you've got an operator or concierge at the desk, you can, from this uh, video, uh, access control terminal, you can call the uh, concierge directly, or I can actually call a resident directly. So if I call resident one, call, that's this sub main door station here. So click, yeah, hello. And again, God, that's quite loud. Sorry about the feedback on that. And call two, which is the one down the other end of the room there. Oh, I can hang up. Um, also, I can use a QR code. So if I just use uh, pin only, so if I go back, because I set it up to face and card, if I go to keypad mode and type in authenticate via employee ID or shift. So if I go password, one, two, three, four, five, six, enter. It's not found because of the authentication mode. If I try to use card and a photo, so what you've got on here is a photo of me on my phone, so live face detection. So if I go and swipe the card. Authenticated. Ah, oh, for God's sake, sorry, that was actually me. So if I move it from the side. Authenticating failed. So you can keep doing that, but. Authenticating fail. Again, live face fail, uh, live face detection. So that's really good. And the next one is the QR code. I like was saying with the QR code, if you put it into QR code scanning mode, you can scan the QR code. There we go. Because I've got it as a uh, face and card. Obviously, that replicates my card. That's my face. Um, but obviously, I can put it down to during visitor hours, um, just card, which would allow you for the QR code. Hopefully, you've got a lot from that video. I know it's a lot to take in, but I really do appreciate uh, capturing your attention. Keep liking, sharing, commenting. We really appreciate the feedback. And have a lovely week. Stay safe. And see you next week for another how-to video. Cheers, guys. Bye.